Hello, these are flip notes 9-5 on attraction and social cultural impact on the self in unit nine on social psychology. And my bitmoji is celebrating because this is the last section of flip notes. We've made it and it's a pretty quick one. So let's get to it. So a quick few slides on the psychology of attraction. So what attracts us to somebody else? Um, a few factors, um, environmental proximity. Um, so just geographic nearness is a powerful predictor of friendship. However, this one is changing because it's 2021 and sometimes nearness is in the virtual world or nearness through an app. Um, so it's different, that one's changing. Uh, the mere exposure effect says repeated exposure to novel stimuli increases one's liking of that item. Basically, the more you're around someone new, the more you grow to like them. You have more opportunities to be around them. Um, the environment, more from the environment, the actual circumstances under which people first meet also influence attraction. If you meet somebody in a more comfortable situation rather than in uncomfortable physical conditions, you're more likely to be attracted to them. Um, attraction is more likely if you so some, associate something pleasant uh, with them. Think of shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette where they go on all those really fun dates and then they are more attracted to each other. Um, similarity. So while there's songs about how opposites attract, psychology actually tells us more likely similarity is what attracts us. Having similar views between individual causes the bond of attraction to strengthen. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to agree on everything, but a lot of times um, similarity on big issues like religion, political beliefs, and family values definitely helps um, push along that attraction. What about physical attractiveness? Does it really matter? Studies say that yes, it really is, especially important in the initial stages of a relationship. Uh, and it's often what draws you towards somebody. The matching hypothesis states that people tend to date, marry, or form other committed relationships with those who are similar in attractiveness. And um, so those who are really attractive tend to end up with other people who are really attractive and also on the other end of the spectrum often end up together. Um, so psychologists say it might be more about compromise, that if you're really attractive, you're not willing to compromise for somebody who's not as attractive for you. Um, we're really attracted to those with the most physical appeal, but we don't want to be rejected by those people. Um, what about different types of love, intimate relationships? Um, passionate love is kind of that earlier stage of love, just an aroused state of intense positive absorption in another, uh, usually at the beginning, uh, you're all consumed with thoughts of that person, you're obsessed. Uh, but then that often grows into compassionate love, deep, affectionate, intimate attachment, mutual concern for the welfare of the other. It may be less arousing, but psychologically, it's more intimate than passionate love. Uh, includes equity, uh, making sure that someone is giving as much as they're taking from the relationship, and then self-disclosure, revealing intimate details about yourself. Um, often compassionate love is what happens as a relationship changes and as people age. Sternberg's triangular theory of love. Uh, we also know Robert Sternberg for his triangular theory of, or triarchic theory of intelligence. I guess he likes to study things in groups of three. Um, but he says that love is composed of three distinct but interrelated components, intimacy, passion, and decision or commitment. Uh, and then he also identifies eight different types of love. There's non-love, which is actually not on the triangle because it's not love, liking, infatuation, uh, empty, romantic, companionate, fatuous, and consummate love. Uh, I don't think you really need to define each of those, but just know that he identified those as part of his theory. Um, I'm moving on to the other half of this section, and it's on the social and cultural impact on the self. Remember, we're in social psychology. Your self-concept is your sense of self in regards to society and personal norms. Uh, we create our self-concept when we compare ourselves to the norms of society. So for example, a girl might call herself a tomboy because she likes things that most boys in her life like, like sports or playing outside. Um, and that's a play off of norms. Social norms are society standards of behavior. Um, so basic norms say that boys like sports, girls like dolls, girls wear pink and behave and are ladylike, boys bottle their emotions but can explode in anger and aggression. And as we know, 
those norms are shattering. It's 2021 and those are not all going to be around too much longer as um, equality. Um, shaping our self-concept, we compare ourselves to the norms of society and that's how we shape our self-concept, but those norms of society are always changing. So how could self-concept vary between individualist, individualistic and collectivist cultures? Remember, individualist cultures, you put yourself first, and in a collectivist culture, you put the group or society first. So what about research on shaping self-concept. Kenneth Clark's doll test um, surfaced around the same time as the Brown versus Board of Education case. Uh, he did this experiment to find the effects of segregation on black children because the case said separate but equal. Um, so he asked, did the separate but equal norm of society impact the way black children viewed themselves? And his study showed, yes, that it did. So in the study, um, black children were shown two dolls. The dolls were identical except for their skin color. One was a white doll and one was a black doll. They were asked questions like, which doll is pretty? Uh, which doll is good? Which doll is bad? Um, and which one looks like you? And so many of the children thought the white doll looked like them and that the white doll was pretty and that the white doll was good and the black doll was bad. So the Clarks, it was him and his wife who did the study, concluded that prejudice, discrimination, and segregation had caused black children to develop a sense of inferiority and self-hatred. Um, so we're going to look at a video of that in class and also see how those views changed since then. Uh, Clark's doll test. Um, another factor affecting self-concept is the stereotype threat. Um, the stereotype threat is a type of self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a self-confirming concern that one will be evaluated based on a negative stereotype. Um, and we'll, this kind of goes back to that blue eye, brown eye experiment that we watched in class the other day. Um, and then when they were reading the flashcards and how the groups, when they were the negative group, um, went slower. Um, but studies show that uh, women, people of color will perform poorly on tests when they believe that they're going to be judged by a negative stereotype. Um, and again, this is a type of self-fulfilling prophecy of belief that leads to its own fulfillment. Um, we'll watch a video clip of a simple experiment of stereotype threat in class. Our final slide about conflict. Conflict is just perceived incompatibility of actions, goals, or ideas it can cause a destructive cycle. Uh, it can put us in social traps. We talked about social traps with the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, those are situations where we pursue our personal interests at the cost of our collective well-being, that we do what we think is best for ourselves, but it's not necessarily. Uh, we develop distorted perceptions, the mirror image perception, as we see our enemy as untrustworthy and evil intentioned, that's how they may also see us. Um, and again, it's that self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, we can behave towards others in ways that influence them to behave in ways that justify or confirm our beliefs about them. So it doesn't work well with conflict. That's it. 9-5 flip notes. That's it for the year. Time for some intensive AP exam review.